right? Um, I never thought I'd make a video like this, but um, I think there's an important conversation to be had. And I just want to be fully accountable, honest, and uh, transparent with all of you guys. Hi, everyone. It's me again. And Squish Gang is present. And today, we're going to be in a little bit of a heavier topic talking about the Andrew Callahan allegations, as well as an analysis of his response video. Now, if you see me kind of like twitching a little bit, I kind of gouge my eye with my mascara. Please don't mind that, but I noticed it still hurts, so I wanted to kind of state that ahead of time. But first, before we get into that, some just channel stuff, as per always, links to social media and sources, what I'm wearing on my face, and any affiliate links to shop it if required, as well, along with like a TikTok of me doing the makeup, will all be down below. Patreon, Amazon wishlist, ways to support the channel also in the description and along with an email where you can suggest content in a bit of a longer form, but also feel free to DM any suggestions to me as well if you would like. I also want to say thank you to my patrons. Names on screen. <laughs> I'm sorry I keep singing when I, I get kind of nervous talking about these types of topics. It's a little bit alarming, I guess, because it's kind of like you never know who it's going to be at this point. You know, a lot of People try to go, you know, man, I always try to find like a good YouTuber and I'm so sad that another one has fallen to the dust. You know, being like a woman and stuff, imagine how tired we are. You know, like the fact that I can't seem to escape this constant fear of like, because when you're seeing these nice people kind of asserting themselves as like these social justice warrior types or whatever, and then this ends up happening you just get this like deep set fear of like, can I even like look around the corner? Am I ever safe? At least that's how I feel. <clears throat> so we're going to jump into this right away. There's three parts of the video. Part one, I'm just going to give a brief introduction as to who Andrew Callahan is. For those of you who don't know, I've just been hearing about this. Part two, we're going to outline the allegations. And part three, we're going to do an analysis of the statement and apology. So part one, who is Andrew Callahan? Andrew Callahan rose to YouTube fame from a channel called All Gas, No Breaks. However, there was kind of an issue with some managing and the company that he or some sort of other person that he was working with. And it kind of kept Andrew away from other jobs in a way that he couldn't really profit from any of them. So essentially, he had disbanded himself from the channel over time because he also kind of wanted to do a series and a couple of other different things. He talked about this on an interview with the H3 podcast. Right. They were like, oh, I was filming I was filming the movie seven days a week. And they were like, where's the Patreon content? Where's the YouTube videos? And yeah. I was like, I don't have time to you know, make them. That's awesome. I, but I said, if you wanted me to make them, just give me 50% instead of 20%. And then they were like, they pretty much were like, get the fuck out of here. Long that, story short. That, that's yeah. insane because like yes. your counter was literally still unfavorable to you. So when he disbanded from the channel, he created this channel called Channel 5 News. Take a shot every time I say channel. Both this channel and All Gas No Breaks were this sort of kind of street interview format, um, but kind of more tied to like a political sense where Andrew kind of just lets people talk just to kind of see where their opinions are. Kind of sits himself in a very center, um, non, non-biased non kind of, almost like a blank canvas type to kind of just let people say what they want to say and then records it for content. He's done interviews with people like Alex Jones as well, has gone to NRA conferences, protests, tons of different events and things like that. And recently, he, his series or his uh, special with HBO had aired. But however, within a couple of days of this happening, the allegations started to flood in and people were distancing themselves from Andrew Callahan. This gets us to the second part of the video, which is outlining the allegations. The allegations, which apparently had started quite some time ago, as long back, it seems, as June 2020. This I got from a channel called The Buckingham Show, where he outlines the allegations in better detail. This video is titled The Complete Andrew Callahan Allegations So Far, and I will link it in the description. Essentially, what I'm doing in this part is kind of just repeating what this video has in a bit of a shorter format because this is not exactly what I want to focus on, but I feel like I would like to be able to mention them in order to have a more cohesive piece for this video. So the first allegation had someone stating that Andrew tried to sleep with her and a drunk friend and was trying to manipulate other girls into sleeping with him, leveraging his platform as well as getting them drunk. We will see kind of through these stories, there is a pattern that forms with that. Then down the line, someone named Sophia on Twitter said that he was trying to use his connections and was trying to get girls to sleep with him. Once again, trying to get them drunk. Someone also claimed that he SA'd a underage girl in Seattle and that she herself had another experience with him when she was very young, about 14, 15, 
and a 17-year-old Andrew tried to pressure her into a sexual situation. About a year later, in August of 2021, an Instagram user named File Format alleged that Andrew tried to coerce her friend, again, trying to get her drunk and sleep with her. And other women had come forward, some of those saying that their experiences with Andrew were when they were underage. A lot of these circumstances were also when he was touring, and people were saying like a lot of these instances were also in Nashville. And apparently what would happen sometimes is there was a story that would repeat where Andrew would say that he was getting, he had gotten into a fight with his crew members and needed somewhere to stay. And in that circumstance, then he would then stay at the house of that person and then coerce them into sex. Another girl claimed she was 17 when he was 22 years old. And when they tried to get away from Andrew, they were going back to the dorms. Uh, I guess it was some sort of university town. They said that they, that he, he was following them and that they literally had to run away from him. One of the most famous instances that kind of started this whole thing, which is one of the recent allegations, was this TikTok video by someone who seems to go by the name Carolyn. I, if I'm wrong, please correct me on that, but came out via TikTok. And this kind of caused the explosion that we're talking about right now. And that brings us to the most recent allegations that surfaced just this week. They first started when a TikTok user named Caroline came forward and discussed her interactions with Andrew. She claimed she met Andrew in St. Petersburg after he had a falling out with a crew member and needed somewhere to stay. They hung out, had some drinks, and returned to her home. She said she made it clear she didn't want to get intimate and repeatedly resisted his sexual advances until ultimately giving in and engaging in intercourse with him. She speaks about how it hurt to see someone lauded as a social justice warrior in the public eye get away with what she considers sexual assault. You shouldn't be supporting him, and at the end of the day, like, I've told close friends of mine i've tried coming out about this before and he texted me saying that it basically ruined his life and that his life was over now because of things that i said and other women have come forward to me a lot of people came forward with stories about andrew after this was made public one claiming Andrew was canceled in New Orleans for presumably similar circumstances and kicked off his show Quarter Confessions that he used to host. Then someone claimed he is known in Seattle for sexual misconduct. Another claiming he assaulted a former roommate who was terrified of coming forward. And many others detailing similar circumstances. Even down to the line Andrew Callahan uses about having a falling out with a crew member and needing somewhere to stay. More girls continued to come out after this TikTok was released as well. And... Andrew allegedly contacted the person who made the original TikTok and said that she was ruining his life. So we see kind of this pattern here, right? Uh, getting girls drunk, advancing, pressuring them, and if they do not cave, then literally following them. And as someone who's a woman, the idea of a man following me home is one of the most terrifying things I could possibly think of. You know, like you start to learn survival skills. Like I literally held on my glasses the other day to like see if someone was looking behind me. Because there was a couple of like inebriated men that were bigger than me kind of making a lot of noise in the metro station. You know, where I'll look in the reflections of windows or I'll use my phone camera or I'll call somebody. So, you know, yeah, I don't think he realizes like the sheer fear that he would be bringing into somebody if he was to do that to them. Whether regardless of how innocent he might think it is, it's just really not. We're going to get into part three for this where we actually analyze the apology statement video. So firstly, before we get into this, just right away aesthetically and the length of the video and the vibe that I'm getting is really giving Gus Johnson almost exactly one year ago. My Gus Johnson apology video was released January 24th, 2022. Now, you're actually going to see this video on, I believe, the 23rd. So, you know, 364 days difference. Interesting with that, isn't it? Now, the video actually had, I could draw a couple of parallels to, uh, for example, that Andrew makes a point to apologize to like the people that he like works with and supports, like the people who like line his pockets, which Gus did as well in the video that he is now deleted. So this is the reason why I will be inserting clips from my own video because I don't have the Gus Johnson one anymore. Reaction, let's start off with the thumbnail. Love that uh, little sad boy thumbnail. He definitely didn't wear a gray sweater because people would have memed on him for it, I think. Doesn't give any, doesn't give any nod to the gravity of everything in a way that is even moderately close to the representation that it deserves. And also I loved that he shouted out his fans and his professional relationships. Okay. Yeah, your bags hurt. Yeah. Should be. You know? Yeah, hurt your finances like you hurt 
Sabrina's body until it almost died by neglecting her. Um, I also want to apologize to um, my closest collaborators, you know, my friends, my family, and people who will have to wear this stain on their career forever. Um, you guys don't deserve this, and uh, I love you guys. Uh I also need to say that Andrew Callahan made a new channel for this, uh, which only has 6K subscribers. You know, at least Gus Johnson put it on his main channel. People often complain when people come out with videos that are not on like their main platform. I think Andrew Callahan tried to skirt by this by doing, you know, a YouTube video. So that's on the same platform, except he did it on a brand new unmonetized channel with 6K subs, as opposed to his channel five news channel with 2.25 million subscribers, 6K compare. Like I have more than 6K. I have more subs than Andrew Callahan. You know, like, what a weird place to be talking about it, like this tiny channel that hasn't existed. But he begins with turning the camera on and saying, I never thought I'd have to make a video like this. My boyfriend and my friend are here, and I heard them watching it, and they both laughed the second that that hit. So it's not just me being like a nitpicky commentary channel YouTuber that thinks that's a load of crap. And it was just like, ugh. So then he thanks those that came out against him. But I feel like that's kind of weird and disingenuous because he proceeds to say that he had a mental health crisis and but then diverts back to it's not about me. So he's bouncing back and forth and he's saying thank you to them, but then also saying he had a crisis. So he's saying, you know, I thank you, but also you've like destroyed me, which I think is a very bizarre juxtaposition to create. So I'd like to start by thanking every single person who's came out uh, in the past week. Um, to speak about different ways in which my behavior has made them feel um, uncomfortable or pressured during a sexual situation and to people who said that I've made unwanted advances and uh, had a hard time with rejection. Um, I'm sure this was not easy to do. It's never easy to speak out. And it was uh, hard for me to hear as well, because to be honest with you, up until this point, I didn't even really realize that I had this pattern that had affected multiple people. Um, I'd also like to apologize for my silence. Um, I think that when this stuff first came out, I was in a state of denial and shock. Um, I was, you know, just riding the high for my movie that just came out. And then within 48 hours, I was denounced by my closest collaborators. And uh, my name was printed in, in, in 40 different news outlets uh, next to the words sexual misconduct. And I just kind of spiraled into a mental health crisis. Uh, I'm okay now, but I don't really think this is about me. This is about the people that I've affected. So I just want to express my complete sympathy, respect, and uh, support for anyone who I've done wrong by. And I really want to do better and be fully accountable for everything that I've done. So. And then he says that he never pushed past no. However, I would disagree with that if there's any truth to the allegations that people were being followed. Um, he calls it sex pest behavior and then proceeds to say that many statements were false, but then never specifies which ones they are. Now, if you are getting accused with dealing with minors and you're getting accused about literal assault, you really should be clarifying because you said that there's truth to some of them. So then which ones are they? Like, this is like something that's really important to clarify. Doesn't know what comes next, but wants to work on himself. One of the key coin terms that people who definitely watch commentary channels to build their apologies find for themselves. And he also states that alcohol has caused many issues with his life and says he will go into a 12-step program. I commend him for that. I believe that anybody who experiences issues with addiction should proceed in that way. He apologizes to his collaborators and wishes for people to continue radical empathy and media literacy. Now, I feel like if you're empathetic, you would think about if someone was trying to pressure you into a situation like that and would think about how terrifying it would be to be followed home, allegedly. But I would guess that radical empathy doesn't align there. Hmm. And he never touches on the patterns of ages or following people. Just the pattern of alcohol. So I want to do a little bit of a rhetoric analysis as well with this because I want to dive into a little bit about this sex pest mentality part of it. Like I said, I think for, for a long time, I was behaving in a way that I actually thought was normal. Um, I thought that, you know, going home from the bar alone made you a loser. Um, I thought that persistence was a form of flattery. And I thought that, you know, if at first somebody was reluctant, you know, they're playing hard to get, just try harder. And if you think someone's feeling you, you know, make a physical advance and uh, see if they go with it. 
And I think that, especially I realized when so many uh, young people, especially young men, rushed to defend me uh, when this stuff first started coming out, that this type of sex pest behavior is normalized. And a lot of people think this stuff is normal when I don't think that it is. And I think that I want to be fully responsible for not having a fluid understanding of consent and what enthusiastic two-way consent looks like. So he says that he kind of, you're almost like conditioned in this way. Now, to a sense, I agree with this. Because sex is a social currency, especially for young men. There is a status in t- in, intertwined with it. And sex is a persuasive act. You're trying to see if the person is into it. However, if you're persuading for the sake of your own benefit against their own, then you are denying the concept of enthusiastic consent. And that is what you need. Enthusiastic consent and typically consent prior to being inebriated. So... I want to go into a little bit about um, Kenneth Burke's rhetoric of motives for this. And I have a really good excerpt I found from this. This is from the section called Pure Persuasion. Psychoanalysis makes us see too clearly the perverted sexual lover. He is unquestionably there. But his presence should not conceal the rhetorical exercise, the artistic persuasion, embodying motives not of sexual but also of social intercourse. Perhaps social is not quite accurate. For youth and age, as contrasted communicating kinds, could not be classed exactly as either sexual or social. They are biological, as with the hierarchical relation between weak and strong. However, both age youth and weak strong, with their complications and reversibilities, readily become identified with social elements, particularly as regards to familial and political symbols of authority. So this is this idea that there's a combination between the family family structure and the kind of sexual prowess of somebody and this kind of drive to want to there's like a component of your ability to be somebody who can you know let's say in Andrew's case get women and your status to be able to be a strong leader or someone who can have a family dynamic in this kind of social hierarchy that is structured in society and this is kind of why with financial this is why he's with his financial power and his clout and stuff he's trying to leverage that He's like, if I am already on a high end of the social hierarchy, I too should be on a high end of the sexual hierarchy. And those don't always, you know, align, especially with so many people being called out recently, I'd say in the past five years or so for these very instances, people are becoming a little bit sharper to that whole ordeal because this was written, I believe, in the 70s, which was a very different time, especially for things of this nature. I would imagine If you were to say, you know, sexual coercion in this circumstance, people in the 70s, so this is actually 1969, people would not be taking it seriously in the way that they are now. So you have to think of the different climate involved with that as well. But that is kind of that social condition that Andrew is essentially saying he has been kind of pushed into. And that is indicative to the persuasive model of trying to date people, court people, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to give a little more detail on that because you couldn't get much out of a four minute video in this case. So I've summed it up in about five times the amount (laughs) of time for that. But, you know, it's it is how it is. But to conclude, I know that a lot of you are hurt, especially young men. But to the young men out there, imagine how tired we are. Like I said, as somebody who just can I feel like I can never feel safe even in a content creator space. And it's just starting to kind of weigh me down a little bit. I kind of felt this way the last couple of videos like these that I've had to make. If I see anything different come out, I will either have to delete this entirely, start over, or I'll address it somewhere else. But as of right now, this is what I have. Again, all of this is alleged. Um, Links, sources, ways to support the channel, what's on my face, including any affiliate links, email to suggest content, all that kind of stuff, all linked down below, including the email for the longer form suggestions. Now, I hope you all have a great day. I'm sorry for another heavy video, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.